Recording now. Yes. Okay. Anders, bring us in. Welcome to the show. Anders Lee here with Pod Damn America. Um, usually Jake does the intro, but I'm already doing a better job, quite frankly. Usually it's like, the, the, the stupid children, something like that. Um, it's, I'm already getting thumbs up from the, from the chat. Uh, I'm joined, of course, by my uh, valiant co-host, Alex Patak. Hi, everybody. I'm Alex. I'm Anders' friend. And we got a twofer today. Two guests. One is Tony Zaret. Hello. Or oh, is this a video podcast? What are we? No, no, no. Okay. We don't need to see. I mean, we'll enjoy seeing you and your. The thumbs up. That was behind the scenes stuff. Oh, that was some okay. shop talk. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, waved. Driving. Well, I waved for the descriptive audio. I waved. It was a great wave. It's, yeah. You know, not a limp wave. It was yeah, right strong. In. What is your when you get these performers in the room, the way they wave is a lot of it. Uh, my shirt, this is uh, again, I, I don't need to move the camera to show my you shirt. This is just of a band metal church. They're a classic, legendary Seattle uh, based um, kind of metal band. Right. And let's all do our shirts. Anders, what are you wearing? What's your shirt? I'm wearing uh, Wyoming. Is Wyoming. Yeah. Just the it's, concept of Wyoming. Well, it's, I think created by the state of Wyoming to get people to visit. Obviously they didn't put working. Of... I can't wait to be there. <laughs> they got trees. <laughs> wow. Doesn't That's the shirt. Pretty good, That's actually. what the shirt does. I have a jingle from the state of South Dakota, actually, which will uh, come up later in the show. Why? Uh, L. Frank Why Bob would that lived, come up? L. Frank Baum lived in South Dakota for, a, for okay. a time. All right. It was All gonna right. come up. <laughs> <laughs> But there's a jingle you hear if you live in a bordering state to South Dakota that you just can't get out of your head. That's South Dakota. It's like tattooed on my brain. Um, and I'm wearing Godzilla and uh, introduce our last guest here. Yes, Laura <laughs> Jacob. Fuck. I asked you before the show and I've already yes. screwed it up. Uh, Jacobus. 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 That's yeah. right. Um, and. Yeah, I'm, I'm wearing a kind of a tropical shirt underneath the sweater. Uh, I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to take the sweater off. Okay. But um, it's it, you would think that it could be a Hawaiian shirt in terms of design. Mm -hmm. But I think it's uh, it, it's a little bit more arty than that. You know, it's not it's not just the regular it, it, it's it's flatter than that. It's it, it's more 2D. Uh, it's uh, also the the solid tone on over the tropical tone is mm -hmm. like two worlds. Yeah, when worlds collide, I would describe Laura as wearing when worlds collide. When worlds collide, <laughs> I think there's really two kinds of Hawaiian shirts. There's like the classic sort of uh, dad mode mm -hmm. Hawaiian, dad mode. which you know is uh, to me a no go. Uh, but then there's also a whole another angle to it, which is like the I would say the 1996 Romeo and Juliet Hawaiian, where it's like you got crazy patterns. It's it's sort of beautiful, mm -hmm. and uh, it just hangs off the bod nicely and sexily. Uh, they're just like so. When people say Hawaiian shirts are lame, it depends on what kind you're talking about. That's so true, and it's so important to get That's, that out. I'm glad you clarified that. Yeah, you said we weren't going to be talking about politics. <laughs> we never said that. It's a politics show. Thank you for listening to the show. <laughs> yeah. So I, I know a listener at this point is wondering, hey, when are we going to hear about the two thousand dollar checks from Bernie Sanders? When are we going to hear about hashtag force the vote? Yada yada. I want my political content, just like uh, I want my MTV. I want my uh, take economy um i want my take economy and this is sort of a political podcast because of a revelation i had recently um mm -hmm. but this episode will be about a classic an american fairy tale that mm -hmm. i'm sure everyone who is listening has seen and if you have not seen this film that is probably the most interesting thing about you quite frankly uh, and the movie, of course, I'm referring to is The Wizard of Oz. And I have these two guests here uh, for a very intentional reason, which is two years ago now, I believe it was, uh, on Laura's podcast, me and Tony were on, and we 
the, what's my what's the name of the podcast Anders? only the best only the best yeah for laura jacobus yeah yeah check it all out all right you and passed believe, it <laughs> so on the show though you have to uh choose between two films to watch and then discuss mm-hmm. and the two we were uh tasked with deciding between one was the wizard of oz and one was french priest movie I don't remember the name. Do you remember the name? Sad. Yeah, it was called Miserable Sad French Priest <laughs> Film. Very quiet. Yeah, it, it was called, yeah, Priest Only Eats Bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Diary of a Country Priest is the, is yeah, the name sad, of the movie. Diary of a Country Priest. Uh, uh, Robert like, Brosson okay. film. More like Diary, oh, of, Diary of a Country, of a country Priest. priest. Yeah. Yeah. I watch that every New Year, so I haven't watched it yet this year. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. Every time a... I go to a bar, it's sorry, you know, when things open up, it's usually playing <laughs> just on the TV. So. This again. It's different without the dialogue, but you can yeah. tell he's eating the bread. Yeah. You can tell. Well, but yeah, the, the, we have these guests on. You've you've opened a discussion with them about film before film, mirrors life, life mirrors politics in a way doesn't it and uh, there's no more relevant film right now than the wizard of oz 1939 right which is what we both ended up regretting we didn't choose we're like uh, i guess we got to eat our vegetables and watch this you know cinematic um, masterpiece right and we we new year's classic it It made me sleepy though i'm gonna be honest because it's very sort of the tone is very kind of yeah very heavy and just one bad thing after another kind of happens. Yeah. Sometimes you're watching it, you're thinking they should have called this the sleepy priest. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it? when you're watching sometimes. it, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is. I, I don't want to <laughs> seem ungrateful because I am glad I had the opportunity to to watch it. It was a, definitely a brilliant film, but I it was it was grim and not it was it wasn't fun, but it was, go, it was a good movie and everyone should should watch it yeah all right especially especially the catholics out there yeah full-on experience yeah catholics i mean catholics in general should watch more movies about priests yeah which is a big lapse i think overall but so we we regretted not watching the wizard of oz but in a way i'm kind of glad in retrospect that we did because at the time i was unaware of a certain theory about Mm. the film the wizard of oz which is that it is an allegory for the American populist movement of the late 19th century, uh, which we'll get into today. But I guess before that, let's start with everybody's like first experience with The Wizard of Oz, because everybody's seen it. Um, I had a VHS tape of it that was it had commercials in it from like. And so my uh version of the wizard of oz in my head has a bunch of commercials from 1989 in it that i like it, it feels weird without them uh, can you remember any of them one was for mcdonald's and it was like a cowboy going to mcdonald's uh huh. and getting a breakfast sandwich they stopped doing that after the 80s i guess so um but alex how about you what, what's your earliest memory of yeah, I'm gonna have to pass on this because this is one of those seminal films where <laughs> I have no idea how I consumed this the first time. It's just thrown at you in your life, and then you just know oh, it's a reference: Munchkins and Rhodes and Tin Men, Scarecrows. I have a lot of questions about the reality of the movie, and I will be saving my input for then. Okay, Tony, how about you? I mean, I think I was maybe six or seven years old. I remember. We went over to somebody's house. It was like, must have been around a holiday or something. I don't know. And just somebody put it on. But again, I was like a little kid and I don't think I've actually watched it since then. Really? What? It's not something I really did. I I did watch it. I remember watching it, but uh, yeah, I haven't probably seen it since I was a little, very little kid. But I mean, I know what happens. uh, It's kind of impossible not to. Even though I, I have a very distinct memory of the day I watched it, but I I can't remember what happened it since. that day. My parents, we went over to some friend's house and we sat, sat around and watched it. And I think we were watching movies all day. I think we also watched uh, like Superman two or three. That's an interesting <laughs> combination. Wow. Yeah, it was a weird, it was just one of those days we we're just sitting around and maybe the parents were out 
were off. I don't know what they were doing, but they just put us in front of the TV. I remember one of the things we watched was The Wizard of Oz. They mm. must have been smoking grass. Am I yeah, right? they were probably out uh, blazing a chiba. So they, <laughs> sure, of course. These are some them, leafy, you know, leafy films. Yeah, I mean, you've seen them. We all watched it. And well, yeah. from the sound of it, it seems like you got a little munchkin of your own. Are you going to be showing them The Wizard of Oz? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. What do people do now? It's kind of. It's on know. HBO Max. If you yeah, I guess that. so. It's a little soon with if it's for like a four month old. Sure. Month old, so you want to wait till they're like six. Yeah. yeah. And then get some friends together. And then usually what they do is you watch that. Then Superman three. Yeah. And anything goes. <laughs> yeah. That's then, the really classic way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. 